pushing out the vids. Holla! That's right. Been down and out. Coming back strong with the videos. Went on a hike. Tried out some new trail runners. These are the Innovate Rocklight 295s. 295 stands for 295 grams. That's how much each shoe weighs. Really? Yeah, really. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the shoe and why I chose to go this way. What was that? Where's your other trail runners? They're right here, son. Uh, reason why I looked for another trail running shoe is because uh, initially, when I first uh, tried out these, these are the Salomon XA Pro 3D Ultra uh, GTX, stands for Gore-Tex shoe, uh, is because uh, when I first tested these things out, uh, I was on flat terrain for 30 miles over here on Long Island. Seemed to do well on flat terrain, no problems. When I took these on the 50 miler uh, earlier this year in June, uh, I noticed a few flaws that uh, again became really annoying in the end. Uh, so let's talk about the flaws of this and why I jumped. Uh, one flaw, if you noticed, I'll get closer here. If you notice it has these, uh, these quick tying laces, which uh, initially seem like the coolest things in the world. They just kind of stuff up in there. However, when you start going up steep terrain and you start putting a lot of flex into the shoe and start to scramble, this loosens up. Now this, this isn't a problem on all of the Solomon shoes. Uh, it's actually, you get mixed results. Some people say they loosen, some people say they don't. Some people even say these things snap. It becomes like a fill repair nightmare. Uh, but I haven't, the, what I've noticed from these is it does slip. So uh, I am one of the, I guess, people that have a negative comment on that, but it slips. So I'd have to retighten these things every, uh, I don't know, three to five miles. Which, if you're planning a 15 mile day, that's around, uh, you know, three to five times you gotta retighten these bad boys. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the other thing uh, that I noticed was the, the shape of the foot box is really narrow and it was causing my feet to get a little squished especially when you're going downhill and uh, that was causing some discomfort on my big toe and my pinky toe and that wasn't too fun. Also the arch support I feel is a little bit too much support to be honest. Uh, my feet don't need much arch support uh, be, being a martial artist and being half monkey that I run around barefoot anyway, uh, my archers are fine. I don't need as much arch support as uh, some other people do, so that was causing me some discomfort in my arch area as well. But the biggest com complaint, the main complaint, the one that actually drove me away from these things were the treads. I was slipping in dry, rocky, no leave areas all over the place. I, I almost busted my ass like four times on the trail and uh, I mean there's no reason for me to bust my ass on the trail. If it's dry, the rocks aren't slippery, they actually have enough grooves where I, I can lock in. Roots, everything. I just, these things weren't grabbing. And I'm going to show you the treads on this versus the uh, Innovates in a, in a minute. So the Solomon XA Pro 3D Ultra GTX are no longer my trail shoe. I've moved away ha -ha, to this. Uh, so, what do I like about the Innovate? What I like is it's got a wider foot box. My feet weren't, squ weren't squished in the same terrain that those things were in. My feet were fine as far as a, no discomfort on my pinky toe or my big toe being squished at the end going downhill. Uh, I chose the mesh design over the Gore-Tex. I have a athlete's foot problem, whereas uh, if my feet get wet, then I tend to grow fungus for some reason. My feet have a propensity for it. What are you going to do? Uh, but I'm hearing that uh, going mesh, uh, if your feet get wet, they will dry out quicker. Uh, so I said, let's put it to the test. Why not? You know, I'm willing to try anything at least five times. So I went this way. I stepped in some puddles. It was snow. Uh, yes, initially my feet got wet, but as I hiked, the, the heat from my feet and from just hiking in general dried out the socks, not completely, but enough where I was like, wow, they were right. Pretty cool. Like that a lot. Uh, notice uh, the, you tie these things the traditional way with shoelaces and tie them once, good for the rest of the day. 
<laughs> that was cool too. Uh, and uh, check out the bottom of these things. Yeah, those are lugs. Some people say that the lugs wear out. Well, these things have probably seen about 50 miles because I did walk around with these things to uh, loosen them up on the streets for a couple weeks. So they've seen some mileage. And uh, I don't see much wear and tear, to be honest. Maybe a little bit where my feet plant because my feet plant a little weird sometimes. But uh, yeah, same terrain, leaves, wet, filthy. No slipping. <laughs> All right, so these things seen harsher environments than uh, the Solomons, and well, they perform better. Also unique about these shoes is it has, I don't know if you can see this, there's, a, there's basically a separation of the, uh, the shoe right here, which allows you to flex more. So I was able to uh, have a more natural motion on the trail and when I was going uphill or anything, I was able to flex my toes to get a deeper, uh, deeper plant to push up, uh, up and over the mountains, and uh, that worked out really well. Overall, uh, the arch support for these things isn't very, uh, isn't very strong, which is what I wanted. Uh, you get a more natural gait with these, in my opinion, and uh, overall, I really liked them. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, the treads comparison between these two. You can see what I'm talking about. Alright, so here are the two shoes together. These are the Solomons. These are the Innovates. Now look, look at how deep these lugs are. And those things are really meant to uh, really get a solid grip on the trail. Whereas, uh, as you can tell, these have seen about maybe, a, uh, let's say, 100 miles. And uh, worn down pretty good. But uh, even so, the way the uh, the tread is for these particular shoes, uh, for backpacking, in my opinion, if you want a good grip, these weren't given it at all. And uh, I actually had a long discussion on the trail with some guy, probably day three or four, uh, about shoes. And uh, he had the, uh, uh, I think the Solomon Spike Cross. He's wearing them in the summertime, and uh, those things had some wicked tread on them. And we both stood on rocks, and his were planted nice and solid on the rocks and trying to slip and I stepped on a rock and pushed down a little bit and I slipped right off. So that's what really got me saying, well, I'm probably going to need a better shoe with better tread. And with these, as you can see, wow, you're definitely going to get some nice, nice uh, traction out of these as opposed to these. And you can just look at that. Look at the difference. See that? the difference. I mean the heel is not really worn out that much. See that? These things are meant to grip. So, big winner in this area. So, uh, these are the Solon Rock Light 295s. I really like them. Uh, I wouldn't be doing my job. Well, this is my job. I wouldn't be doing you the courtesy without giving you some, uh, some points that I didn't like about the shoe. Uh, one thing, well the only main thing I didn't like about the shoe is for some reason the bottoms of my soles uh, ached after 30 miles for quite a long time. I'd say I'd had a, about a week, week and a half of an ache, uh, probably because of the way these things plant. Uh, my feet were in condition for it. Uh, but I did walk on the treadmill for like six weeks for a half an hour, three times, two or three times a week, barefoot to condition my feet uh, for the less of a, the sole padding. And uh, I still had some aches. Maybe half the ache was me walking barefoot to begin with. I don't know. More testing has to be required on my part to, to see why my feet were aching a little bit. But as far as uh, the lightness, uh, I liked. Uh, that's probably it is my feet ache, and i got to figure out why. That's probably the only thing I didn't like about these shoes. Uh, having a, uh, a mesh design versus a Gore-Tex design uh, wasn't comfortable the first couple days. The third day, I finally got used to it. Uh, just accept the fact your feet are going to get wet and just get over it. Uh, so, you know, that's something I didn't like, my feet getting wet, but they did dry out eventually to the point where it was not bad. Uh, 
The other thing is, because this is a mesh design, uh, the really muddy water that gets in, this doesn't filter in the mud. You, your socks will get muddy, period. Uh, I mean, soak right, mud soaked right through, so uh, be prepared to wash your socks a little more than, than you want to. I didn't have to wash my socks because they were completely protected from, uh, from uh, the mud seeping through because this is Gore-Tex liner. But the drawback with the Gore-Tex liner is it doesn't breathe as much as they say it does at all, really. I, I don't think it breathes really, <laughs> to be honest. My feet are just really bad sweaters. Um, uh, my feet were just soaked the entire day because the, uh, the sweat wasn't evaporating. So I did get athlete's foot, if you're going to ask the question. I did after the, the hike. Uh, my feet got wet, and uh, I thought I didn't get it. And then a couple days afterwards, started getting itchy, and then I was like, let me just put the cream on, and the itchiness went away. So I would be confirmed athlete's foot. So, all right. That's uh, my discussion on the Rock Lake 295s. Uh, I liked them. I'm going to take them on my next big hike, uh, which will probably be uh, late spring of 2012, assuming that the world doesn't explode in some, some fiery mess. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Water Monkey, bringing the reviews. Holla! WaterMonkey.net Straight Gangsta